Hi, I'm going to introduce about quantum cascade lasers through this video. Before getting into what a quantum cascade laser is, it is important to know what a traditional laser is. It is a device that emits light through a process of optical amplification on the stimulated emission of electromagnetic radiation. They are used a lot around us. Here is a video made by Vulgar Station team that might help you understand how a laser works. Like the video shown, photons having same wavelengths and energy are amplified and this makes a laser work. Typically, interband semiconductor lasers are used, which emit electromagnetic radiation through the recombination of electron hole pairs across the material band gap. And of course, the band gap is not changed unless the material is not changed. Let's see how interband transition works. Within a semiconductor crystal, electrons can occupy states in one of two continuous energy bands which are valence band and conduction band. The two energy bands are separated by an energy band gap and between the band gap, there are no permitted states available for electrons to occupy. Conventional semiconductor laser diodes generate light by a single photon being emitted when a high energy electron in the conduction band recombines with a hole in the valence band. Therefore, the emission wavelength of laser diodes is determined by the band gap of the semiconductor used. However, what we are interested in, which is quantum cascade laser, does not use bulk semiconductor materials and it's Electrons undergo intersub band transition, not interband transition. Let's see more details about quantum cascade laser. What is quantum cascade lasers? Quantum cascade laser, or short QCL, is a semiconductor laser that emits the mid to far infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. It was first demonstrated by researchers at Bell Laboratories such as Barrel-based Federico Capasso and Deborah Sivko in 1994. Like I said before, it does not use bulk semiconductor materials. Instead, it is consist consists of a periodic series of thin layers of varying material composition could forming a super lattice. Because the super lattice has a varying electric potential across the length of the device, electrons can occupy different positions over the length of the device. The super lattice shown in the picture is an example, which is made of two semiconductor materials with different band gaps. Therefore, it is related to one dimensional multiple quantum well that we learned in our class. This is the picture of a finite potential quantum well shown in our lecture note. And if you solve Schrodinger equation, it is possible to get this result. Even though potential of the outside is higher than the kinetic energy of the waves, you can see that the waves pass through the well. 
like repeated finite potential quantum well in quantum cascade lasers, electrons pass it through many barriers. In quantum mechanics, even if the waves have lower energy than the barriers, it is possible for them to pass through the barriers like the picture shown. It is called quantum tunneling. You can calculate the result using the shown Schrodinger equation. Let's get back to quantum cascade lasers. Using principle of finite quantum well and quantum tunneling, you might understand the principle of QCL. Like shown in the picture, there are dozens of alternating layers of semiconductor material forming quantum energy wells that confine the electrons to particular energy states. And there are two main regions repeated, active regions and injector regions. As each electron traverses the burial medium, it moves from one quantum well to the next, driven by the voltage applied across the device. At active region, the electron moves from one valence band energy state to a lower one and it emits a photon like this. However, at injector region, there are multiple similar quantum wells connected with one another. Therefore, it makes electrons tunnel through the regions to another active site. And when it encounters the next active region, it tunnels again and emits another photon. The QCL may have as many as 75 active regions and each electron generates that many photons as it traverses the structure. Let's see more details of active region. One active region is consisted of three finite quantum wells or standard three level system where each level is a confined state. Under the right applied bias, an electron will be injected via resonant tunneling in the upper state of the active region and relax to the lower state, eventually emitting a photon like level 3 to 2. Here, important thing is to make the lifetime of the transition from level 3 to 2 has to be longer than lifetime of the electrons in level 2 because it causes population inversion between two subbands which makes the relaxation process happen. Then the electron will be transported through the relaxation region and injected into the upper state of the following period where it will again be able to emit a photon. We now have figured out that Engineering a population inversion is important for emitting photons. Now, how can we control this position of the energy level? It is quite simple. Mostly in QCLs, the system's energy levels are determined by the layer thickness, not the material. And therefore, it is possible to tune the emission wavelengths of QCLs over a wide range in the same material system. This is a good thing compared to semiconductor lasers, whose wavelengths cannot be fixed. Using advantages of QCLs, the most important application for QCLs is in gas sensing and measurement. Systems based on widely tunable QCLs can be used to measure multiple gas species, and narrowly targeted systems can detect and measure gas concentrations in the parts per trillion range. I have explained about quantum cascade lasers. I tried to make it easy to understand, so I hope that everyone can understand what QCL is. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching my video.